Welcome. We're going to take a look at flexible budgets, so if you get out your lecture notes, we can go ahead and get started. First, we'll look at planning versus flexible budgets. Static budgets or planning budgets, those names are synonymous. Uh, these are created at the beginning of the period, and they're only valid for one level of activity. So, in fact, when we covered budgeting, this is what we did. We prepared an income statement based on one level of projected sales. Say we thought sales would be 10,000 units. So these are suitable for planning, uh, but we are going to begin to look at performance evaluation and how accounting can help managers with uh, controlling the organization. And static or planning budgets have limited use for this purpose of performance evaluation. Flexible budgets. Well, what is a flexible budget? It's simply a budget that reflects what revenues and costs should have been given the actual level of activity during the period. Okay, so flexible budgets are generally prepared for the income statement rather than the entire income statement and balance sheet. When are flexible budgets prepared? Well, this would have to be at the end of the period because it's based on actual activity, the actual level of sales or the actual level of direct labor hours. So there's no way it could be prepared at any other time. What activity level is used to prepare a flexible budget? the actual level of activity. So it's a budget based on the actual activity that occurred. These are useful because the numbers are comparable. They're going to be at the same level of activity. It's important to know that you do have to pay attention to cost behavior when you're preparing a flexible budget. And again, what we mean by that is you have to know which of your costs are fixed and which of your costs are variable. All right, so when, we're, when you're asked to look at performance reports and performance evaluation, you should apply the idea that we want to look at the flexible budget and compare that to the actual data. We will find differences, and they'll be called variances. All right, we're going to have either favorable or unfavorable variances. If budgeted revenues are less than actual revenues, that's favorable. If budgeted costs are greater than actual costs, that's favorable. So sometimes it's easier to look at it from the perspective of actual costs. You want actual revenues to be greater and actual costs to be less than the budget. The opposite is true for unfavorable variances. For unfavorable, your budgeted revenues will be greater than actual and your budgeted costs will be less than actual. Once again, you can look at it from the other side and, and say, if actual revenues are less than budget, that is not good. It's unfavorable. And if actual costs are greater than budget, it is unfavorable. All right, so let's turn to our example. Samaritan Medical Clinic offers low-cost health care by utilizing donated facilities and volunteer services from local medical practitioners, Samaritan only pays a fraction of the cost of most clinics. The clinic uses patient visits as its measure of activity. So the more patients that come, the more of our variable costs we will incur. For the upcoming year, the clinic budgeted for 4,000 patient visits at a fee of $25 per visit. Variable expenses include personnel costs, $8 per visit, and occupancy costs, $5 per visit. Fixed expenses for salaries and an occupancy-related costs were budgeted at $45,000. Samaritan Medical Clinic actually provided service to 3,800 patients during the period. The report shown compares the static budget 
results based on 4,000 patient visits to the actual operating results for the year based on 3,800 patient visits. Compute the variances for revenues and costs. All right, so again, in summary, in the planning phase, they thought 4,000 patients would come to the clinic, but only 3,800 did. So when you look at the example, what you want to make sure you understand is that the actual results are what the records show at the end of the period. The static budget or the planning budget would have been based on the 4,000 units that they thought, or 4,000 patients that they thought would be there. So again, emphasize the static budget will be based on 4,000 patients. The actual results is shown in terms of 3,800 patients. Right, so you see the revenue, I've, I've given you the calculations. The budgeted revenues will be 4,000 times 25, or 100,000. Personnel expenses are variable, and occupancy costs are variable. They were given to be $8 per patient and $5 per patient. And so those crunch out to be 32,000 of personnel expenses and 20,000 of occupancy costs. So in the planning phase, we thought our contribution margin would be $48,000. We were also given fixed costs were expected to be $45,000. So in the planning phase, we thought income would be 3,000. Operating income actually came in to be 3,100. Now it says to go ahead and compute the variances. We're going to do this for demonstration purposes. The variance is if we compare the static budget to the actual results, variances are just differences between the two. You can see revenue would show up as 2,000. It's unfavorable because our revenues were less than planned. Our actual revenues were less than the budget. Now for the variable expenses, we have personnel that came in 1,000 less than planned, so that's favorable. And occupancy costs came in 1,500 less than planned, so that's favorable as well. So overall, our contribution came in, our contribution margin came in $500 favorable. Fixed expenses were 400 higher than planned, so that's unfavorable. And that leaves us a $100 favorable operating income variance. So what we want to ask is, would these variable costs have been different due solely to a difference in the number of patients? So if you think about it, when we budgeted, we budgeted for 4,000 patients. If less patients come, the variable cost should be lower just because of that lower volume. All right, so those two are problematic when you make this comparison. So then we ask, is this a valid assessment? And the answer is no. When you compare the columns at two different levels of activity, one at 4,000 patients and one at 3,800 patients, you're not really comparing numbers that are, that are the same. It's especially a problem for revenues and variable costs. Fixed costs should not change just because of volume, but both revenues and variable costs should. So there is a better way. So keep in mind that we looked at the static budget and compared it to the actual results to demonstrate that it is problematic and that it is not the way that we should prepare a performance report if we're going to use it for performance evaluation purposes. The way we should do it is demonstrated next. Prepare the clinic's flexible budget performance report for the period. The actual cost of the services are provided in the performance report shown. 
complete the flexible budget column and calculate the revenue and spending variances. Label each variance as favorable or unfavorable. All right, so once again, we have the same performance report, but rather than static or planning budget in the first column, we have flexible budget. So before we begin our calculations, notice that revenue for the flexible budget column is going to be based on the 3,800 patients that actually visited the clinic. We're still going to use the budgeted price of $25. All right, so the flexible budget, the revenues and variable costs will be based on 3,800 patients. The actual results show what really happened based on 3,800 patients. So sales should have been $95,000 for 3,800 patients. Personnel expenses should have been $30,400. Occupancy cost should have been $19,000. And the contribution margin should have been $45,600. Fixed expenses were budgeted to be $45,000 and that should not change solely due to a difference in activity. So based on the flexible budget, operating income should have been $600. So if we look at the variances when we compare the flexible budget to the actual result, it'll look like this. Revenue, 98,000 actual revenue should have been 95,000 based on 3,800 patients. So that's a favorable variance. What we know then is that we did charge a slightly higher price than $25. The personnel expenses actually came in unfavorable. We should have spent $30,400. We did spend $31,000 on personnel. Occupancy costs came in $500 favorable since we spent less than the budget allowed. Our contribution margin is $2,900 favorable, meaning the actual contribution margin was greater than the flexible budget. The fixed cost variance is still 400 unfavorable. That really didn't change because, again, fixed costs are not affected by volume. All right, so overall, our operating income is 2,500 favorable. So the question is, is this a more valid assessment tool for performance evaluation? And the answer is yes. The actual results in the flexible budget both reflect revenues and costs at the same level of activity, that 3,800 patients. So once again, this comparison is best for performance evaluation. So that concludes our example, but what you want to make sure you understand is that flexible budgets are used for performance evaluation purposes. All right, now this will feed into uh, some of the other topics that we'll be discussing, so make sure you understand the concept of a flexible budget, and be sure to ask questions if you have them. See you in class.